If you're learning how to code in 2025, then it's safe to say that you're probably not the most optimistic. Especially if you go on social media, all you see is people complaining, talking about how cooked the job market is, you see memes comparing computer science students to homeless people, and everybody is talking about how AI is going to completely replace the tech industry, and soon everybody, including myself, is going to be on the side of the road homeless without a job. Now obviously these are exaggerations, but there is some truth to the fact that it's become more difficult to land a tech job and the industry has changed drastically from where it was four or five years ago. So in this video, I want to give you some rules that you can follow if you are going to learn how to code in 2025 and talk about if it's actually worth it to do that. So let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, I need you to understand that this field is not designed for everybody. Just because you're smart doesn't mean you should become a software developer, and truthfully, most people should not get into this field. Unless you really enjoy this and it's something you actually want to do the rest of your life, you should not become a software developer, and a lot of the people you see complaining online are ones that got into this field because of the promise of a high pay. They thought they were going to make a ton of money, they were going to land a job at Google after six months of going through a boot camp, and when that didn't happen, they started complaining. They weren't ready to put in more effort to actually land the job, and they quickly switched into something else because this just wasn't something they had a lot of passion for. Now that leads me nicely into my first rule, which is if you're going to learn how to code, you need to make this fun. Yes, not every topic is going to be enjoyable, but generally speaking, you should be looking forward to coding most of the time. You should be working on projects that are fun, that are enjoyable, that you actually want to make. Go build a game, make a cool website, make a cool AI model, do something that's interesting to you, because if you just go through all of the boring theory, you're going to burn out very quickly and it's not going to be something that's sustainable. Speaking from first-hand experience, the only reason I got good at coding is because I purely did it at the beginning for fun. I wasn't trying to land a job, I wasn't grinding for an internship, I was literally coding because it was super fun and I loved building games and showing what I made to other people. Now that leads me to my next point, which is you need to write a massive amount of code. There's no shortcutting this, you need to put the effort in and you need to spend thousands upon thousands of hours writing code before you're going to be a competent developer. Simply watching videos, going through courses, or reading textbooks is not going to make you a good programmer. That's why so many people that go through a computer science degree come out of the program and don't actually know how to write code. Yes, they've done a ton of theory, they understand the concepts, but they can't actually put it into their editor because they haven't put in that effort. So please, be prepared for this, and if you're not willing to spend thousands of hours actually writing code, this is not a field that you're going to be able to get into. Now speaking of writing a lot of code, today's sponsor, Boot.dev, is a fantastic platform that will guarantee you do that. Boot.dev isn't just another learning platform, it's an innovative experience that's designed to keep you hooked. By blending principles of modern game design with coding education, Boot.dev makes learning backend skills not only productive, but genuinely enjoyable. And best of all, you can browse all of their content completely for free. Here's what sets it apart. Boot.dev is all about hands-on practical learning. Instead of endless hours of passive video watching, you'll be coding directly in your browser, tackling real-world projects that grow your skills step by step. The focus is on back-end development, so you'll be digging deep into areas like databases, APIs, and server-side programming, especially with Python and Go. What I like most is that it's structured like a game. You'll earn levels as you progress, unlocking fresh content and staying motivated as you hit new milestones. The platform emphasizes actual coding exercises and projects because let's face it, that's the only true way to get good at coding by writing a lot of code. And here's something else that you'll love, you're not just coding in complete isolation. Boot.dev also fosters a sense of community and provides tools to connect with others working towards similar goals. If you're serious about stepping up your backend skills or becoming a software engineer, then go to Boot.dev now and use my discount code TECHWITHTIM for 25% off your first year on the annual plan. Now we move to rule number three, which is you need to stick to one area. So many people switch between languages and frameworks and constantly learn something new. They never get good in one particular area and they're never able to present themselves as a niche expert, which is really what you need if you want to be competitive in the job market today. Look, it's great to know a lot of different stuff and have kind of broad knowledge in different areas, but if you're just starting out, you're doing yourself a massive disservice if you switch between languages every few weeks. Now I can tell you this from firsthand experience because it happened to me and also it happens to a ton of students that I talk to. I'll ask them what have they been learning for the past year and they tell me a hundred different 
different things. When the answer really should be, I got very good at Python, I got very good at C++, I'm an expert at making games, I'm great in this framework, almost none of them present that. And that's why they don't have the skills to actually be productive and land a job because they've just went and dabbled in a bunch of these different areas. So when you're learning how to code, it's so important that you stay focused, you pick one area that you want to get good at, and you make sure that you complete your expertise in that area before you start moving on to a million different topics. Now that leads me to rule number four, which will help enforce rule number three, and that's that you need to follow a strict roadmap. If you don't have a roadmap, if you don't have a plan, there's no way you're gonna make significant progress. You need to know the topics that you're gonna learn, when you're gonna learn them, and a rough timeline on how long that should take you. You really should spend the effort take a day or two and prepare a roadmap with all of the things that you need to become employable. Now, personally, this is what I do for students of my mentorship program, DevLaunch, which you can check out for the link in the description. But the point is almost all of them come in, they don't have any kind of plan, and they have no idea what they should be doing next. So they're just bouncing all over the place, guessing what they should be doing, going off of the YouTube video they watched or the TikTok they saw, and they don't have a structured, solid, focused plan to help them make progress and actually reach their goals. Now, the next rule on my list is that you need to build stuff on your own. You need to get hands-on experience in the code editor doing something completely from scratch that no one is helping you with. No one's holding your hands, no tutorials walking you through everything that you need to do, and you simply sit there and you figure out how to do it by yourself. Sure, you can consult different resources, but the point is you need to get that experience actually problem solving, debugging, working through the issues, planning out your code, and everything that any experienced developer does pretty much every single day. The way you get good at software development is by struggling through problems constantly, building that resilience and understanding how to find the resources you need when you need them to solve specific problems. So please do yourself a favor, sit in front of the code editor, stop following all the tutorials and just try to work on something by yourself. If you get stuck, you can reach out to different resources, but you need to get that practice and it's something that so many students really never get. Now for number six on my list is that you need to be obsessed. Software development is a field that you need to live. You need to constantly stay up to date. You need to be checking what new languages and technologies are coming out, refreshing your skills, and really just be obsessed with this field in general. If you're not someone who's interested in new things that are coming out, keeping up with technologies, if you're not actually actively learning more, this probably isn't a field that you want to get into or that you're going to be successful with because anyone who's a good developer is completely obsessed with this. Their whole Twitter feed's full of software development. They're watching videos, they're reading the new documentation, they're checking out press releases, they're going to events, they're talking with others in the field. This is their life. If you ask them what they do, they say, I'm a software developer. That's what you need to act like. And that's how you're going to get good is by being completely obsessed with this field. Now, the last rule on my list here is that you need to be comfortable failing. If you want to get good at software development, you're going to fail constantly. You're not going to get called back for an interview. You're going to fail that technical interview that you go in for. You're going to fail writing this code. It's not going to pass the test case. There's going to be a bug or an error and you need to persevere and continue failing and failing and failing until eventually you have that success. Look, even for someone like me who naturally was pretty good at software development, started very young, when I was applying for my first internship, I applied to about 70 different companies and I only got a single interview. That was a massive fail. That was a massive hit to my ego, but I needed that to really wake me up and tell me that there was more that needed to be done if I wanted to succeed. From there, I failed countless times after that. I failed interviews, I failed projects, I failed videos on YouTube that I never posted because they were so bad. But these were all great learning experiences and if I was too scared to attempt the task in the first place, I never would have learned from it and I never would have been where I am today. So please remove some of that fear. Don't be afraid to fail and honestly fail as many times as you possibly can because those are really where you learn the most and where you're able to level up in your career and your skill in software development. So those are my rules for you, but I want to give you a quick take on AI. Now, a lot of people debate whether you should use AI when you're learning how to code. Some people will say don't use it all. Some will say use it for literally everything. My approach is a little bit more nuanced and I want to share it with you here. If you're learning how to code, I think absolutely you should utilize AI, but specifically for the purpose of learning. Don't use it for generating code or writing all of your solutions. Use it to check your understanding and to quiz you. 
One of the best things that AI can do is give you instant feedback. If you write the solution to a program and you're not sure it's correct, give it to AI and ask it to analyze your solution and tell you all of the mistakes. Explain a concept to it and see if it understands and if it makes sense. Really use it to augment your learning and get instant feedback very quickly, but don't crutch on it to actually write your code. You should still be there writing all of the code in your editor. Don't use it for code generation, but use it simply as a learning resource and something like an assistant or a tutor that can kind of guide you along the way. I found that students of mine that do this find they learn way, way faster, but you have to be very careful to not rely completely on the AI and make sure you go out of your way to write code on your own. So anyways, guys, that's going to wrap up this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.